in Romans chapter 12, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, this is important. It's not what I'm preaching, but it's important to go along with it. So in, in, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, Be ye, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that perfect and acceptable will of God. So it has a very strong statement in there in the book of Romans that we actually co-labor with Christ. We've got to work with him. So say, be ye transformed. And how are you going to be transformed? By renewing what? Your mind. So we're going to do some transformation when we get into this one particular psalm. We're going to be transformed by renewing our mind to a, a psalm that we're probably uh, very much familiar with. I mentioned the psalm. I didn't preach on it last Sunday, but I mentioned it. I called it the soldier psalm, and it's going to be pretty powerful and very insightful. So one other place that I'm not going to take you to, but it's going to be James chapter 3. I'm not taking you there, but James chapter 3 is where it really talks about the power of the tongue and how it's like a rudder, like a ship. And Let's see, in James chapter 3 and verse 10, it really talks about the mouth, out of the mouth, blessings and cursings. These things ought not be so. So, it's, and that's going to be chapter 3 and verse 10. But before that, it talks about the ship, and it talks about the power of the tongue, if you will. Most of us have had a very intensive teaching over the years of the power of life and death is in the tongue. So we're, we understand that. Those who love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Blessings and cursings are in the tongue. So we understand that our words, because even Jesus said it, if you believe in your heart that those things which you say, you shall have them. So a lot of us have that teaching. And yes, we got to have reminders, and we do have to have messages and sermons that are on specific the power of the tongue, because we want to make sure that we're, uh, we're, if we can get the tongue right, we can get the world right. And I'm talking about our own personal life. Things will begin to fall into place by the power of the tongue. Jesus said it. And I'll repeat it because it's, it's so powerful. And he said, if you believe in the heart, if you believe in the heart, those things which you say, you shall have it. Your heart condition and your thought life is so critical and crucial not to get under some kind of legalistic bondage, but if you can get your thought life right, you can get the rest of your life right. If you can, if you can be transformed by renewing this thing up here, your mind, if you would think right, things would fall into divine alignment because your faith and your words need to line up to what you really want in life. If you're confessing what's in your heart, because out of the abundance of the heart, the Bible says the mouth will speak. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak, quoting Scripture again. So whatever is in your heart is coming out of your mouth. And we want to make sure that uh, we have faith-filled words. we got to discipline ourselves. And saints, I'm in no way, shape, or form trying to imply that once you get born again and get baptized in the Holy Ghost, and set on fire with God and get some word of God in your heart that you're not going to have to continue this process all the way to the grave. Come on. Because life changes. Life has thrown a lot of things our direction over the last couple of years that we've had to deal with. And we hear different terminologies that we've never heard before. Um, technology, terminology. I, there's so much that's happened in the last two years that never happened in at least the first uh, 15, 16, 20, 21 years of my life, what's happened in the last two years. I've never seen such that has taken this earth, this world by storm in so many directions. And I believe in the Word of God above all other. I've got to have my faith and my trust in the Word of God. If I don't have my faith and trust in the Word of God, I'm not going to be able to survive what's happening on this planet and going on on this planet. And saints, one thing that's very important that I want to share with you is you can't live by somebody else's faith. You're going to have to, it's dealt, every man, the Bible says, is dealt a measure of faith. You want more faith? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Last Sunday you were here, your faith went skyrocketing. I mean, you guys were up on your feet three, four times. You were just standing and hollering because you were, you were like, yes, even in the midst of it all, God can sustain me. I won't go back to all those scriptures, but it was a powerful preaching, came on me an anointing to let us know that, look, it can look like it's bad. It can look like it, you're sealed into the den with the lions, but God, but God, because his angels do encamp around about us and deliver us. God is for us and not against us. Don't measure your walk with God 
against somebody else's walk with God. Don't do it. Because someone else may not be at the level you are in your faith. Don't criticize them. Just keep them in prayer. Amen? And somebody else may be at a much greater level in faith where they're actually, they know how to call things be not as though they were, like the Bible says. They walk by faith and not by sight. And you look at their life and you're like, I don't know how they can go through what they go through and still keep the joy of the Lord. I don't know how they can walk through what they got to walk through. And they have the peace that passes all understanding. You know, but it's the light and the witness that that individual is just at that level. You don't get there overnight. You, you got to work this thing out. Like the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Sometimes you got to work it out. And you got to remind yourself who God really is and remind yourself who you are in God's sight through Christ Jesus. So there's a powerful psalm, and it's Psalms 91. So we're going to go into Psalms 91. I'm going to read it, and then I want to show you some insight. While you're turning to Psalms 91, again, I'm not preaching anything legalistic or legalism, but I do want to at least bring to your attention that the Word of God says, quoting again, that we are to meditate on His Word day and night. If you meditate on His Word day and night, it says, and then, and then you will make your way prosperous and be of great success. So there's a working sometimes in the word, with the word, renewing the mind by the word, uh, speaking the word, and just declaring it over your life. So Psalms 91 is a very special psalm. Now, if you are looking and you've looked in the past through your book of Psalms, David compiled this, the books together. You'll actually see that different people have authored this particular psalms. You'll see that David sung it, in the, or it was a prayer of Asher. Or you'll see where uh, Moses. In fact, in Psalms 90, not going to preach or teach from it, uh, in Psalms 90, it's, it gives who wrote it. It's a prayer of Moses, the man of God. So Psalms 90, we know that when David compiled the book of Psalms, because it is a book, when he compiled that book of Psalms, this was a prayer that Moses had prayed. However, in verse 91, Moses historically is the one that they say, historically, he's the one who did this particular prayer. And that is important that we do know that, but Moses, what the Bible says, he's one of the meekest men on the earth. Remember that? He's humble, he's meek. So he's, he doesn't even, and this particular psalm is so important to Moses of what he's seeing and what he's saying. And it's so important to him that if you will, he wouldn't even put his name to it to authorize that he was the author that God used for that particular psalm. He wanted to make sure that in that psalm, that God got 100%, not, not 90% or 95% or 99%, 100% of every credit that's inside there. He wanted it to be truly, truly God-centered and God-focused. And what take, what's taking place here behind the scenes before reading this, but it's going to be important at the end, is that the tabernacle historically had just been finished. So the tabernacle has just been finished. So he was able to go in, if you would, to the tabernacle where the Levites worked and uh, the Holy of Holies, if you would, uh, like when he was on Mount Sinai and the cloud and the glory of God. We call it Pentecost. Hebrews call it Shavuot, uh, which is coming up real soon. And, and the Pentecost, the power and the presence of God was on Mount Sinai where Moses was getting a lot of the first, or the first five books, if you will, of the Bible. Let's look at this now. This is very important. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall do what? Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in Him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place, 
No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion, the cobra, the lion, the serpent. You shall trample underfoot. Because you have set, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Got to know my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That's a mouthful. That's a powerful, 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 powerful place of scripture. Now, the Hebrews, of course, the Jewish people, they will pray this prayer in the morning. This is part of the Shema here or Israel. So they're going to pray this in the morning. They're going to pray this in the afternoon. And they're going to pray it again in the evening. Three times a day they're going to be praying this prayer. Um, why? Because it brings protection. There is so much uh, milk of the word and the meat of the word uh, that's in here that you have to take time to meditate on this long enough that it actually gets in your heart and not just in your head. Uh huh. According to your faith, be it unto you, right? All things are possible to him who believes. So you've got to believe in order to receive, okay? So let's go over this a little bit slower now. He who dwells, he who dwells in the secret place, he who dwells, He who dwells in the secret place, he who dwells, dwells, habitates, makes a habitation. He who dwells in the secret place. The secret place, if you wonder where really the secret place is, it's no longer behind the veil, because remember that has been split, and the glory departed, and Jeremiah prophesied it, other prophets prophesied it, that there was a day coming where God will no longer just walk with man, but he will dwell inside of them. He would take his word and write it upon their heart. He would give them a new heart and take out the heart of stone and give a heart of what? Flesh. So he was going to give them a brand new heart. And it even says that the love of God is shed abroad upon our hearts by what? By the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's not dwelling in a tabernacle made by man's hands. Now we have become the temple of God, the tabernacle place where God's tabernacling on the inside of us. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, right? So, but you have to, what, you, you open your heart, you believe in your heart, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. So where's the secret place going to be? It's going to be in your heart, that you're going to carry him with you. Now, yes, according to Revelations, there will be a new Jerusalem. It will come out of heaven, and God will come and tabernacle with man. But we need to know what Moses is looking at and what Moses is saying because he is caught up, if, if he will, in the glory and the presence of God. And he says, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, of the Most High. Well, who's the Most High? In Hebrew, it's Elion, like El Elion, Most High, meaning that he, there is nothing higher than God. You see? So he who dwells, he, Moses is telling you, you dwell in the secret place of the Most High, El Elyon. Elyon, the Most High is what it would say if it was written in Hebrew. And that would be a name. He's the Most High. If you get that, then when you start getting to all of these other things with pestilences and all this other stuff, you, 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 you remember, wait a minute, I dwell in the place of the Most High. I dwell in the place of the Most High. It doesn't matter what sickness, disease, or pestilence that I cannot see that walks about in darkness, even though I can't see it, even though I got a name for it all over the television, even though I can't see it with my eyes. One thing I do know is if I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, if I tabernacle in the presence of the Most High, then I know I will abide under the shadow of, of the Almighty. What is the Almighty? According to the scriptures in Hebrew, the Almighty is going to be El Shaddai, or just say Shaddai. (laughs) El Shaddai. Well, that means a lot. 
because now I'm dwelling in the secret place of Elion, the Most High. There's, there's no one greater than God. And I'm talking about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So the Trinity is one. But there's no one greater. God is the awesomeness. And now I know that He's the Most High means nothing in this life is, is bigger than Him. Amen. Nothing in this life can conquer Him or overcome Him. And now I know he's the almighty, almighty in Hebrew, that would have been Shaddai. He's El, most high, El, Shaddai. Well, that means all sufficient, more than enough. He's going to overshadow me like a father standing over his child and the shadow is cast over his child. That child knows as long as that shadow of his dad is standing behind him, he knows he's got protection. Somebody's got his back. And that's what you and I need to get out of this in this day and hour that we're walking through is, hey, somebody's got my back. Somebody's got my back. Yes, yeah, somebody's got my back. God's got my back. He's El Shaddai. He's a shield and a buckler. Yes, but he's got my back. And so I'm abiding. And that word abiding also uh, kind of in, insinuates what we call going to a retreat. Okay. It's better for me to say it that way because when you think of abiding, sometimes you think that you have to be standing somewhere, you know, and just like this. This is abiding. This is abiding. This is abiding. No, you can, yes, stand in one place and be abiding into the presence of God. But that particular word also is like we call like a retreat. I want to run to the Most High. I want to retreat. He's my rock and my fortress, my high tower in whom I trust. Now you see what I'm saying. He's my rock. He's my fortress. He's my fortress. So when I abide, also means I retreat. I'm, I'm retreating. I'm running to him. As the deer panteth after the water brook, so does my soul panteth after thee. I'm, I'm, I'm retreating. That would be the songs of Solomon. As the deer panteth after the water brook, so does my soul panteth after thee. Well, the deer pants for the water brook, not for just the drink of water, but if it has a beast of a lion or something chasing it, it will go to the water where the animal will not follow. So it's retreating as a place of safety, not just a place of quenching the thirst. So as the deer panteth for the water, so does my soul panteth for thee. Means when I when trouble comes, I don't run from God. I run to God. When trouble comes, I don't run from God. I run to God because He's El Shaddai. <laughs> he's El Shaddai. Abba. He's Daddy. He's Father. And and I know that He will protect me because I know what His Word says, and I declare His Word, and I believe His Word. Verse two. I will say of the Lord, that's Adonai, Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. I mean, that's, that's, it's in there again. My God, in him will I trust. You know, Job, Job said something, and it wasn't biblically accurate, but in the situation he was walking through, you got to remember, his wife was even to the point, she was like, Job, why don't you just curse God and die? I mean, so that's some pretty tough times. And I'm not going to go through that, uh, the whole scenario, what Job was walking through. All I know is Job said something that was not biblically correct because God wasn't being the destroyer. But he said, talking about God to his wife, probably, though he slay me, yet shall I serve him. Now, that might not be a biblically inspired word right there, but I like that kind of grit and that kind of gut of that spiritual walk in that man. To say, look, I've lost everything, the house, the cattle, the kids, everything. I've lost it all. I lost everything. And on top of that, I got boils and I've got sores all over my body. But though he slay me, yet shall I serve him. I like that kind of grit and fortitude that people are used to say these words. I hope this isn't, doesn't offend anybody. Um, it, it's an old saying, but I hope it don't offend anybody. Uh, it is a word that's in the Bible also. And so, uh, you know, some people would say, come hell or high water. You, you may have heard that before. Well, the word hell is throughout the Bible, so I'm not uh, cussing. I'm, I'm just saying that's, 
that's that grit that's in there, but hell or high water. It means whether I got to go through the fire or I got to go through the flood, I'm not going to give up on God. My trust has got to stay in God. My trust has got to stay in God. I don't know why I got to go through what I got to go through, and I don't know how long I'm going to have to go through, but one thing I do know, I can put my trust in God. He'll overshadow me. He'll be my refuge. He'll be my fortress. I'm just going to put my trust in you, God. I don't know. I know man can slay me, but they can't kill the soul. So I'm going to trust you regardless of what I got to walk out or walk through because when it's all said and done, I'm with you, you're with me. It's an everlasting covenant. It's established between you and your son. It cannot be broken by the shed blood of Jesus. It is signed, sealed, and delivered. I'm yours. (laughs) Hey! (laughs) That's a little throwback, but (laughs) those who caught it, good. Those who didn't, that's all right. It meant the same thing. (laughs) I'm telling you, Jesus is a good. So... This is what I like about the verse, verse three. He says this, surely, (laughs) this is positively, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the perilous pestilence. Surely he shall. You got to get it in your heart. Be transformed by renewing your mind. Renew your mind to the fact, no, he's going to deliver me. Now, you've heard of probably falconry where they would take and actually use like a hawk and put it on there, and they'd go hunting. Well, it's kind of like a play on words there because a fowler will actually a lot of times stand in open, not so much hiding, but looking for the unobserving animal, the one who's not paying no attention to its surroundings, and that's the one that it wants to swoop in and grab. But also, a fowler would be one who sets a trap, a snare, the snare of the fowler, the snare. He sets a trap. So sometimes Lucifer will wait until you're no longer observing your surroundings. And when you're not observing your surroundings, and he's standing right there in the open, he's not really hiding. He just knows you're not observing. And therefore, that's when he wants to set a trap for you entice you, set a trap for you, and then catch you in the trap. But here's the thing, but God, (laughs) God going to put some angels in charge of you and me, and we're not going to get in the trap. He's going to save us from the trap. He's going to deliver us. He's going to, it didn't say the trap wasn't there, huh? Boy, I could preach that to a bunch of 21 year olds. I could preach that up and one side down the other to tell them, Quit acting stupid, stupid. I'm telling you. So it's just, I'm just, I'm just tell me. You, you got to, why can't you tell that that person is nothing but a snare? You know we have, some of us, we've been around long enough that even when our children start dating somebody, we can look at them and say, uh-uh. <laughs> no, 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 uh-uh. Mm-mm. And they're like, nah, nah, that's the, that's the one. I just know it in my heart. You ain't know it in your heart. You just know it in your flesh. <laughs> your carnality got a hold of you. That's not called love, L-O-V-E. That's called L-U-S-T, okay? Spell it right, yep. <laughs> it's lust. You're being driven by your flesh because the enemy is trying to entice you in a moment in which you are not to be enticed because you are not ready. So how do you know when you're ready? Well, I'm not going to preach on all that, but if you ain't got a job, you ain't ready. So just leave it right there. We'll just make it simple for you. We'll just make it simple for you and let somebody else preach that on another day. But if you ain't got a job, you ain't ready. That's, that's where it starts. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. So you're going to get that refuge. I, I, he's, he's what? He's your truth. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. His truth. Moses don't understand that the whole tabernacle system that God's using in his day and hour is going to be done away with through Jesus Christ. He may have some glimpses, uh, but there was going to be a day coming where it wasn't going to be the Day of Atonement every year, Yom Kippur. There wasn't going to be a lamb slaughtered in every year on Yom Kippur. He didn't know that there was one high priest that was going to come 
And maybe he did know because he did stand on the mountain and talk to him. So maybe he did have a little bit of glimpse into it all. And, uh, but that's in the New Testament, the whole other Mount of Transfiguration. But ne- that's, that's after Moses has already been gone. So surely he would, uh, let me just go back to this. I'm, uh, my brain's flowing. I'm thinking, well, surely Moses knew because he's already done, been passed away. And he's with God. And, and so, uh, right, we're going to go here. <laughs> Did not Jesus say, I am the way, the truth? See, he's he's wrapped up in here. If you look for him, he's wrapped up in here because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. So he shall, Jesus shall be my shield and my buckler. I can plead the power of the blood of Jesus any day of the week, and I don't have to wait for Yom Kippur once a year. I don't have to wait for Passover once a year. Because uh, the blood on the doorpost went on the cross and is everlasting for me. Jesus don't have to be crucified afresh. He did it. He paid it. All of my sins, iniquities, all of my guilt, everything he took upon himself. I got to put my trust in his finished work on the cross when he drew his breath and said it is finished. I have to put my trust where? He's the truth. So if I'm going to claim Psalms 91, and I am, then I want to also claim that he's the truth. And the devil don't like the truth because the devil is a liar. But the truth will set you free. And that's Jesus Christ. And when you start speaking the name of Jesus and you start talking about the blood of the lamb, you'll put the devil on the run every time. He doesn't want to mess around. He knows he was defeated through the cross and the resurrection. So therefore, I remind him, you are defeated. Because look what it says here. You, it says uh, he's going to be your, your shield and buckler, truth. Verse 5, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. You're going to quench every fiery dart, amen, with the shield of faith. Let me go on into this verse 6 also about this pestilence that walks in darkness and the destruction that lays waste at noonday. Thousand at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Huh? Now, saints, that's important for our day and hour, not just times that they walk through in, in the Middle Ages and, and in ancient times in history. I, I had, we, were, we, were, we were gone for a few days uh, this week, so I wasn't watching television and watching the news. Uh, last night, we, um, late in the afternoon, got in from seeing Co-Pastor Sherry's mom, and we got in, and, and I turned on the TV, and I turned on the news, because it looked like a microburst happened in my front yard. I had branches everywhere and stuff. I don't know what took place here in Lake County, but I, I, something went through my yard, and I had, I had branches everywhere. I mean, phew, it was crazy. Um, but here's, here's one, it's one sentence. I turn on the news, and then they, they got something called a monkey pox. I'm like, Lord, have mercy. What? You go away for a couple of days and come back, and now they want to tell you, you got mon- now there's another, another one. There's the uptick that started two weeks ago, and they got this and this, and now thousands and thousands of more people and stuff like that. And I'm like, now you got the monkey pox. And they just want to show somebody's arm and leg with all the little stuff on it. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's only like 70 people or some 40 people. I don't know. But they're in different parts of the world, even. They're not even in the United States. And I'm like, saints, if you don't know how to either turn off that TV and keep your nose in this book, you've you got to make sure that you know this stuff because when that stuff starts showing you on TV and you're like, what are they talking about? They said this is transferable by clothing. So now if, if it's transferable by clothing, then, you know, and we don't have it here in the United States. It's not here, saints, at least not that we know of. But now, that, now, now we're back to who wants to go shopping and try on clothes? Hey, you order it online and hope it fits after you wash it. And then you just ship it back. I mean, it's getting crazy, is it not? Not to go preach in doom and gloom, but I'm trying to tell you that if you have this, Psalms 91 in your heart and in your head, you're like, monkey pox don't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. No pestilence. A thousand can fall to my left and 10,000 can fall at my right hand, but me ain't getting no monkey pox on me. No, nope. won't receive that. I believe that he's not only he, he just, just my protector, but he's, uh, he's Jehovah Rapha. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my healer. And it doesn't matter what the doctor says, because you guys know this. I believe 
that when the doctors tell me a fact, I can take the truth to set me free from that fact. And it may, not, it may take a while, and it's done that before, but I'm going to keep using the Word of God. Lord, uh, uh, according to the news, another th- a thousand fell. I hear things, saints, that it, uh, my mind cannot wrap around. Amen. Right now in Kenya, uh, Kenya, they're going through such, a, such a, a famine. I mean, I know it's in the Bible. It talks about famines and pestilence and diseases and earthquakes and fires. and I, I know, but all in the same day? You know, it's like, can you spread it out a little bit? But it's all at once. It's happening all over the earth. Wars, not just rumors, but wars, with the rumors also behind him. you got rumors backing the wars, that more is coming from another place if we do this or if we do that. This is crazy. I can't live in crazy. I have to live in peace of mind. And for me to live in peace of mind, I've got to keep my focus on this, that God can change whatever's going on and protect us and keep us and guide us and lead us. Because they said 40, every 48 seconds, a person is dying of starvation right now. Every 48 seconds. That's not even a minute. That's not even 60 seconds. So you just, you don't talk about a minute, a few seconds. You can start calculating that up and it messes you up. And I'm like, boy, I tell you what, we better, we better learn to walk by faith. Not by fear, but by faith that God is my source, my resource, my shield, my buckler, my high tower, my fortress. He's everything. And i got to walk in it. Verse, verse 8, only with my eyes I'm going to look and see. Well, well I've seen it. I've seen it all over the television. I see it. I'm not denying that there's not these things happening. But it's this what it says in verse 9, because you have made, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge... Say, so he's my refuge. He's my place of rest. He's my, he's my place. Even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil. Say, no evil. No evil. That's what I'm claiming. Name it, claim it, frame it. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Isn't this, some, this, isn't this kind of fascinating, verse 11 and 12? And then what's fascinating about it, when I'm going to read it, but what's fascinating about it is that's the exact two verses that Satan said to Jesus when he wanted him to throw himself off of the temple after he said, I give you all of this, all these kingdoms. And he wouldn't. He wouldn't change the rock into bread and he wouldn't jump off. But Satan actually quoted this. Satan really didn't know half the stuff that was in this. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And that's, you know what that's trying to tell you and me? Why did Satan use that to Jesus? Because, remember, it was called, if you will, amount of temptation. It was temptation. He was trying to tempt Jesus. So in here, me and you, we got to see that we know that the angels encamp around about us to deliver us, lest we dash our foot against a stone. And that's why, not legalism, but that's why they pray it in the morning, they pray it in the afternoon, and they pray it in the e- evening, because they really believe that Psalms 91 is against the demonic forces. That's, and that's a particular Psalms 91, is what is believed among the Jewish people uh, all the way back to Moses' time, because they actually have the Midrash, and they have the Oratory, they have, they have the writings uh, describing what took place and what people were saying at the times. So historically, they believe it's this particular psalm that breaks, if you will, the power of demonic forces off of people's lives. No evil shall befall. Why? These angels are going to make sure that I don't get trapped up in a snare of the fowler. I'm not going to get trapped up in the enemy. I'm not going to get into a pestilence. I'm not going to get into a sickness. I'm not going to get into a disease. Why? Because somehow... God's going to make sure not only is he going to overshadow me, but his angels are going to be right there with me. As I said in the Psalms uh, earlier that you were singing, Psalms uh, 23, that surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. You see, I believe in it. I really believe it with all of my heart. I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that there are not angels among us and angels that are set on assignment, according to the scripture, to be with you all the days of your life. I believe it with all of my heart. Let me show you something in the Psalms 104. Just kind of flip over there real quick. Psalms 104. And I want you to just look at this. I feel an anointing up in here that God is trying to 
warn us to prepare us before the next wave of something else comes along. I want to be ready for it. As they say, I want gas in the tank. I don't want to be walking on the side of the road. I want to make sure I know ahead of time and go ahead and fill up the tank than to find myself on the side of the road walking in the heat of the day. You know, I'm speaking spiritually using symbols there. I don't want to be walking in the heat of the day and being tormented because I didn't prep something that I should have prepped. And I'm not talking about prepping for the apocalypse. Come on. I'm not talking about that kind of prepping where you're digging a hole in your backyard to hide somewhere. And I'm not against it. Don't email me. Just tell me where the address is. Something bad happened. I come stay with you. Okay? With you. Not with you. With you. Uh, Because you got all the canned goods and the hiding places. So um, I'm I'm all right with that. I'm just, I got a pool in my backyard. I'm not digging a hole to hide it. (laughs) Back to the scripture. Did I say 104? Okay, do 103. It's just right above it. <laughs> Verse 19, 20, and 21. Look at this. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Remember that. His kingdom rules over all, right? And it does. Look at verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who will excel in strength, who do his word. Heeding the voice of his word, bless the Lord, all you his hosts, which would be in the Hebrew for the Lord, would be Sebavot, the God of armies, the Lord of hosts. Your ministers who's of his who do his pleasure. What's it say in verse 20? Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do what? They do his word, heeding the voice of his word. So when I confess this verse 11 and 12 out loud, it's God's word giving voice to God's word, giving voice to God's word, for he shall give his angels charge over you, that's me, to keep me, Mm -hmm. you know you got to send some extra angels for me, because I ain't as good as everybody else in the room, I need a little extra help, you know who I am before I was ever formed in my mother's womb, you knew the trouble I was going to make before I ever made it, so I know you knew God to send a couple extra for me. And he did. I could only, I only could imagine how many angels God has used throughout my life that I didn't dash my foot against a stone. I couldn't. I, there's stories upon stories that I could tell you, and you probably could tell me where the enemy should have should have got a hold of you and took you out that night. You should never have made it through. You should. Not, oh man, there's time after time that I can just testify, God. Oh, what grace, what tender mercy, what loving kindness. And I don't know, but if it was possible, I'd like to tell God, you know, if it's possible, God, all things are possible with you. Would you give these angels a raise? Because they've been working hard. I just had a birthday. You know, all the years I've made these angels work. These ain't on a three-day weekend. These guys have got work seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days out of the year. They can't stop. Because they don't know what I'm about to do. So they're constantly walking around and doing this. Just like, well, where's he going now? Who knows? Get in front of him. Get on the side of him. Because you know, he'll leave. I'll go on a tour and you guys know these things about me. I get on a tour and the tour guide's going one way and I'm off in another. I, 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 it's not right, but I, it's, it's part of who I am. I'm just saying this. Parts about me that's not perfect or perfected. And I'm known just to walk off. I like adventure. I like exploring. So, you know, next thing I know, I can't see their flag no longer saying this is where the tour is. I'm like, I don't know where I'm at, but I better find my way. And I do. But the point is, these guys need a raise. (laughs) I probably got an angel with a broken wing trying to keep up with me. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. Don't, don't, don't mark that down as truth. Let's finish this up, then I'll let you. We'll put, do a prayer, and you can take this home with you. So uh, verse 13, we're going to tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent. We're going to trample under the foot. In that where devil, the devil belongs is under your feet, under the body of Christ, under our feet. We ought to be able to tell the devil, get under my feet. You ain't got no business. You're not to be in front of me, behind me, beside me. You don't belong anywhere but under me. I am above you. 
through Christ Jesus, not by my works that any man shall boast, but through Christ Jesus, I have authority over principalities and powers. And so you have no right to my life, no sickness, no disease. Here's another one, a word you can throw in there. Premature spiritual death. Premature. The Bible talks about a spirit of death. And you can come against that and say, well, in your prayer time with God in that Psalms 91, I, I speak against any kind of spirit of death that is trying to come against my life. I don't care if you want to call it COVID or if you want to call it something else or something brand new that come up. You call it whatever you want to call it, but it ain't going to take my life. You say, well, you don't know that. No, I don't know that, but I know if I put my faith in it, I, I stand a chance. If I, if I put my faith and my trust in God, at least I stand a chance that through faith and trust that by his stripes, I'm going to be healed and protected. But if I allow fear to overcome me and don't watch the power of my tongue, life and death is in the tongue, uh, then I'm going to mess up. But if I speak right in my heart, speak right in my mind, think right, I stand a better chance. How about you, right? You stand a better chance knowing that God can make a way. You don't stress as much. It doesn't mean that it doesn't come as a snare of the enemy to try to get you to stress, be stressed out, but you come back to that refuge. You come back to that place in God's you know, God's my source. God's my source. He's my source, my resource. He's El Shaddai. He's more than enough. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's my provider. He is everything. He is everything. And he dwells in me. We are, if you will, the temple of the Lord. Isn't that powerful? Only two verses left. Three, actually, 14, 15, and 16. Because, because he has set his love upon me, now God's speaking, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has what? Known my name. I know the name. There's many names that shows the attributes of God, but I know one name that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I know one name that death could not hold him down. I know one name that is the resurrection and the life. I know one name who paid the price for all of my sins and iniquities and faults and failures. I know one name and which puts my name in his book, the Lamb's book of life. I know one name above all names that I can use. And that name right here that I'm going to set my love upon in God and God's love is going to be set upon me. Why? Because I trust in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. I believe he is the Messiah. I believe he is the most high. I believe he's at the right hand of the father making intercession for me. I believe he's the high priest in the order of Melchizedek, but he's in the high priest forever. He no longer has to do a sacrifice once a year. He is the final sacrifice and my trust is in him. I may have to walk through hell at times, but one thing I do know, the end of my destination is heaven. Yes, I do know. I may have to walk through pain sometimes that puts tears in my eyes. But one thing I do know, there's a time that it will wipe away all tears and all pain is going to be gone. So I'm not going to focus on all of the pain, all of the hurting, and all of the problem. Now I'm speaking to all of us my age and older. We got to quit asking people how you feel. We don't, I don't want to know. I can see on your face how you feel. Okay? So uh, I can just look at you. And if your light is shining, I know you feel good today. If you don't look like you're shining very much, then, then I already know. Can, 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 I, can I preach it that way? I'm not talking about me because I, I got I, I to be up here and pray for everybody. So I, I do personally, I'm preaching to you. I have to go above and beyond as a minister, and I have to sometimes pull out the problems so I can help them in their situation. That's a different thing. That's a shepherd's anointing. You got to do it. I'm just talking to you all. Sometimes when you get to a certain age, quit asking how you feel. When everything on your agenda is, what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? I'm telling you, saints, you think I'm preaching at you, just you on that one. I'm preaching to me and, and my house on that one, too. We're so, we so tired of that. Are, don't you get tired? What do you think you're going to want for supper? I don't know. <laughs> when did it come to that? I don't want to get off my subject, but when did it come to that? 
My whole life, other than when we didn't have much in the cabinet, but my whole life, I never worried about what I was going to eat. Not worried about it. Not stressed about it. And you know, most, most of us, as soon as you walk in here and get in the car and you leave, leave the church, that's the very first question you're going to have. No, whoo! Boy, that song's not the one was a hot one. It's going to be more like, what do you feel like eating? I don't think I'm on, I want Kentucky Fried Chicken. No, I don't want Kentucky. I, we had Kentucky last week. I said, yeah, that was last week. I just go, you get whatever you want, and I'll just figure it out for myself. Do, do I sound like I'm in your house? You just, you just get whatever you want, and I'll figure out whatever I want for myself. All right, we'll do that. Take me home. I'll order pizza. They'll deliver. <laughs> Don't have to cook it. Don't have to clean up after it. Don't even have to go get it. <laughs> and I, I still put the TV tray outside. I hit social distancing. <laughs> Don't even want to talk to you. I remember my flip flops, <laughs> my shorts, t shirt. Ring the doorbell and back out. <laughs> I got to quit this mess or I'll tell them they can't, they can't air it. Right now they have to, it's live streaming. All right, so <laughs> he shall call upon me and I will answer him. Verse 15, he, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I shall satisfy him and show him what? My salvation. Well, I met him. His name is Jesus. That's his salvation for you and me. I've met the salvation that comes through Jesus Christ. So now I know when I call upon the name of the Lord, he is going to hear my call. And according to his word, he's going to deliver me out of my troubles. He'll deliver me out of all of my troubles. I wish he'd do it just a little bit faster sometimes, but it's not going to stop me from keeping my trust because I'm going to abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He's my rock, my fortress. He's the one I'm going to run to in a time of safety. So hold on. Before I close this message, I'm telling all of you, hold on to God. Hold on to what you know is true in the word of God. Don't let it get robbed from you. Don't let the enemy talk you out of what God has told you what will be and can be. Hold on to the things of the Lord and don't let go all the days of your life. One of the things I've said it and I've said it for years and I'll say it again. I believe the scripture when it says it is impossible to please God but by faith for you must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And that means I live it. I don't just quote it. I live it. I walk by faith, not by sight. Don't matter what it looks like. Keep on moving forward. Don't matter what it sounds like. Don't listen to the voices of the enemy. Just keep on going. I walk by faith and not by sight. I walk by faith and not by sight. Sure looks dark out there. It looks like things are getting worse. Well, that's all right. I can see what's happening with the wicked with my eyes, but I'm not going to participate. I'm going to walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, it looks like you're going to, you know, everything's falling apart. Everything's coming apart. You're not going to make it. No, no, no. There ain't no, there ain't no such thing. Not going to make it. My name's written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm going to make it. It just doesn't say as we're pilgrims passing through all the things of trials and tribulation and fiery furnaces of affliction. It doesn't, you know, say all the things that I might have to walk through, but going to make it. And nothing going to stop me. If I'm in the hand of God, nothing can take me out of the hand of God. Didn't say that things won't happen, but I'm going to keep it. Keep the faith. Whatever you're going through, keep the faith. Just hold on. Hold on, hold on. This too shall pass. Hold on. Renew the mind. Try your best. I'm not saying you're not denying things that are happening in your life. I'm saying try your best to do more talking about the good things that you believe that God is about to do than the bad things that you think the enemy is up to. Keep it straight and narrow. Don't matter what it looks like. Don't matter what the news keeps saying. Not denying it. 
I'm not denying it's not happening. I'm just denying it doesn't have no right to happen to me. I'm on Psalms 91. I'm going to believe in it. I'm going to trust in it. I'm going to walk in it. And I'm going to let these angels do what they're supposed to do and excel in strength because they perform and they work and excel in strength when they hear the voice of God's word, the voice of God's word, not your voice of a problem, but the voice that God can fix this to.